Wonderbirds are supported by dogfriendly.co.uk, improving the lives of dogs and their owners. Hello. Hi, darling. Hey. Happy Saturday. 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 It's Saturday. What day? Who said Sunday? I didn't say Sunday. No, no Saturday. Saturday. Brain. Your brain <laughs> Saturday. did Saturday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so spring has sprung and I, I, we've been spring cleaning. Um, it starts this weekend, doesn't it? It's time to get down the Austrian blinds, give them a little dust. Um, we started this morning in the, uh, in the music room and then this afternoon we'll do the morning room. Um, <laughs> Very good. And then the east wing and, and the west wing. wing. It, yeah. I might have polished a little bit of silver uh, this oh, morning. Oh, lovely. Uh, Is that a euphemism for something? Um, well, the other half, they're not, <laughs> you know, that would be brass, dear. <laughs> yes. Brass, brass oh. monkeys. Brass yes, that would be brass. So, so I, I, I actually find polishing things quite therapeutic because I can. I'm sure of... you do. This is going too Richard. This is going to polish. I've mate. heard this about you, Richard, many times. Oh yeah. dear God. Well, anyway, I'm mm -hmm. only just around the house when you're on your fours. Doing... <laughs> Darling, oh! is it? A, are you doing a low dust or just a high dust? A, a low dust, no, because at our age, if we bend down, we can't get back up. So I know, uh, dear, not without ropes and pulleys. Yeah, on our ropes and pulleys. So if it's, <laughs> if, it's, if it's at eye level, it gets a wipe down. Um, yes, yeah. yeah. Polishing, polishing the knickknacks, uh, which I find quite therapeutic, and then it'll be time, I suppose, to start filling in the cracks. But we know all about Steady. that. Steady. I hate the skirting boards, dear. I can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's when, you know when the, you know when the light starts creeping in and yes you sort of think, oh, okay well welcome this is wonderful old friend please do flood the house with light and you realize you've been living in squalor for the last six I months know, all the dust. <laughs> that's right it shows up all the dust and everything oh, and got to get why the place done. smells I, I just suddenly noticed different smells around the place and i don't think that's quite interesting is it because the doors are now i mean open all the time oh, and, and there was but it's well, fresher, well, isn't it? It's Are you talking fresher. about your personal doors, darling? Are there a, yes, my open. personal <laughs> doors. That's yeah. not yeah. the euphemism. No, not either. Uh, but it's just, no, I'm perhaps it's smelling a bit doggy in this house. I need to undog it. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh I know. Really move on. So, our theme of the week, please. Theme of the week? Yes. Theatrical, yes. theatrical yes. experiences. In, oh, in, all, in all out of the theatre, and I, I would like to start because I had a very strange thing that happened to me in the theatre, which is nothing to do with me being on the stage. Uh huh. So many years ago, an actor. Do you remember an actor called N. Rytel? Yes, of yes. course. He was, yes. he, was in, he was in Spitting Image and all of those things, but he was actually in me and my ghost. Did loads and loads of theatre. We went to see, and I'm not going to tell you who was in the play, but we went to see a play at Windsor Theatre, and we were very bored halfway through it was a very hot day and we were sitting about 10 rows from the, the front of the stage and he said to me should we just go out and have a drink and then go backstage afterwards and say it was great so I said okay so I climbed over him because he was in the aisle seat and he got out after me and what I didn't realize was that he'd stood on my skirt and my skirt fell down and I was standing in the aisle of Windsor Theatre in my knickers and then oh. no one was watching the show they were only watching this woman standing there with her knickers oh. and, yeah. and then tried to and then tried to uh, protect me. So he got up and he put his arms around my waist and then fell on me. So by this time, we are we have now fallen <gasps> in the aisle. We are climbing to try and get out the theatre. <laughs> He's pulling my skirt up. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so we, we got out. You can imagine, we were in hysterics. And then we went backstage afterwards to see our friends who said, what on earth was happening in the audience? <laughs> because we lost them and we were going, really? <laughs> That was, my, that was That's, my experience. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's hysterical. I, I, I we were going to discuss, you know, the points when we first saw the <laughs> show that it sort of changed your life and the sense that it informed your cultural sensibility. <laughs> Sorry. You know, basically, pants down in the aisle. Yes. Um, and, and a slow clap from the audience. Right. <laughs> <One more. laughs> Oh, anyway, oh, so I might raise the tone, which is very rare for me. So my first ever experience of the theatre, aside from pantomime, which I used to love as a kid, obviously, because it was, you know, filled with treats and goodies and all that sort of thing. And it was the most wonderful time of the year, was going to see Jess Conrad as Joseph 
in his amazing <laughs> Technicolor dream coat. And I was, uh, I must have been all of about, I don't know, maybe seven years <laughs> old or something, because it was, yeah, it was, the, it was the 70s. And uh, it, it's the first time I'd ever seen a musical. And it was a school trip, obviously, junior school. And it absolutely blew my mind. And I remember um, uh, pestering mum and dad to buy me like the vinyl version of the, the you know, the Lloyd Webber soundtrack and uh, learnt the words from there on in from the 1970s. And over the years, uh, whenever the show has come on, whether it was Jason Donovan, Philip Schofield or Sheridan Smith, as it was, I, I, I've taken my parents along. Um, being, oh. Normally at the Palladium, isn't it? And uh, I went along with mum. So that would have been summer before last, wouldn't it? It must have been summer before last. Mm, yeah. And I remember sitting down there and, and next to us was this little boy and his mum. And he was singing along to all the words. And I'm sat there with mum on this side, this little lad on that side. Mm. And the two of us are just, you know, oh. mouthing, you know, the, the lyrics, because obviously it, would, it wow. wouldn't be an unfettered joy for the people in front of us if we were actually <laughs> belting out the tunes. But I was a blubbering mess because oh. it about oh. that little boy uh, back in the 1970s who fell in love with musical things. Oh. It was yes. absolutely spectacular. And my clothes didn't fall off, Debbie. <laughs> Tall. In the eyes, they, oh. to hear it. Glad to hear it. And if they had fallen off, they would have been red and yellow and green and brown and, <laughs> and black and of peach and Very good. And violet and mo. Oh, love it, love yeah. it, love it. And, and that's when I fell in love Lovely with theatre. Um, I used to love the rattle of the Maltesers when they fall out of your lap and go oh. back. Oh, the, yeah. The very poignant check off <laughs> moment. Um, but. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I love it. 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 The show must go on, as you know, age. We've got to bring it back. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, it's like when I was a little girl, I used to, when I used to go to the backstage in theatre, when I used to go backstage, I always <laughs> used to think that the, that the steps were covered in stardust. You know, that sort of crinkly stuff that they had on the, in this cement on the backstage steps? Oh, yes. I used to think that was stardust. Oh, oh. how sweet. <laughs> you're, you're, you're always in a, like a Disney sort of, Yes, lifestyle. I live, I, I live yeah. my life in a, as a Disney film. You do. <laughs> Disney princess. I remember the oh, things I God. remember were, um, I was about 15, 14, 15, and I remember going to see a lot of Shakespeare, and I remember seeing um, Winter's Tale with Judy Dench and um, a Merchant of Venice with Olivier and those sort of things. And they re to see those charismatic people live, and Donald Sindon and... Um, Judy Dench and something and another amazing show seeing those people live where they were so extraordinary that brought Shakespeare to life in a way if I read it was a dyslexic I couldn't read it anyway but you suddenly it it makes sense oh. and I just remember those were the most yeah. amazing experience it's funny you should say that age because I remember seeing uh Judy Dench and uh Anthony Hopkins and we're going back some now in Anthony and Cleopatra and oh my god it was explosive oh. I mean it was extraordinary yeah absolutely yeah. and my very very early memory my mum was writing a play Olivier commissioned for Joan Plowright and I remember going to backstage at the National Theatre and there was a little kind of um funny little troll thing as a lucky charm in his office and he said um I was saying oh that's really sweet I was I must have been really really young and he gave it to me and I still got it <laughs> Oh, oh. And Sherry, oh, everybody is still buzzing about your Ophelia at the National. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. Nobody How could we not be? Grown. No one looks better Absolutely. covered in flowers. Gorgeous, <laughs> darling. How Great tell you. How... Well, I was on the stage at the age of four. So and you, I win. Doing, you win. You uh, win. And I, oh, yeah. I was doing three shows a week by the age of six. Right. <laughs> So, but so. I always remember they were called reviews, and I always remember I did the tap routine at the beginning, and um, but there was one girl who had the ballet number, and she had a tutu, which, were, in my opinion, was covered in diamonds, and I was probably five by this time, and I wanted the tutu, <laughs> and I wanted <laughs> that part because I had to do the tap number at the beginning and then go off and she would come on. Anyway, strangely, we were standing backstage one day and we were all lined up and the teacher was saying, you know, now the, the show's going to start. And I mean, 
and just behind me was about four stone steps. And the girl with the tutu was standing next to me. No. And strangely, she fell down those four steps and twisted her ankle and couldn't go on. So the teacher went, Sherry, come on, put that tutu on, get on and do that. <laughs> never stand next to her on some oh, steps, ever. Never. Let's is hear this what I think it is, darling. Was that what but, I think but, it is? But I was, I was found out and I was suspended for two weeks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God, there's a sort of thing for Nick for these days. That is so, so basically Baby Jane from... from yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I oh got that God. tutu and I wore that tutu <laughs> until her foot was better. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm surprised she didn't your story. story. We'll talk about falling over. Yeah. I'm not going to give it away. One of my first jobs, I think it was somewhere remote, like Watford Rep or something. I was doing a pantomime, I was understudying Cinderella and I was an ASM. For people who don't know, that's assistant stage manager. And one of my <laughs> jobs was getting two actors into the horse. You know, the horse that goes <laughs> jumping on. And the one in front was fine, but the one at the back always liked a little tipple before he went on. And he had a flask, hip flask. He used to hand me the hip flask. I push him into the, into the back of the horse and he'd go on and it was always like, you know, he was a bit like that. Well, one night he'd had, a, 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 you know, one too many of the little tipples. And suddenly as he goes on, the left foot slips over the stage and I see the whole horse going, <laughs> and I scream to all, all the stage hands, quick, quick. They jump down and just about managed to catch the horse before it hits the ground. <laughs> and got it back on the stage and I think maybe after that he was um mm, reprimanded somewhat <laughs> <laughs> this oh my God. and this finesse that obviously theatre going audiences are missing hugely yes. um, <laughs> absolutely I mean there are some, there are some actors that, that that play that play horrible jokes for you on stage one of them I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked with Stephen Pinder but he he looks He's got a very innocent looking face. He was in Brookside for quite a long time. Got lovely yeah. blue eyes, looks so innocent. And I did a play with him, lovely rehearsals, never, never thought anything of it. And I had a scene where he wasn't in and just talking to somebody. And then I went first night of a different play, you know, new audience, everything, really quite nervous. And all of a sudden he's under the table and he's actually kissing my feet. And he, <laughs> such, he used to do things like this all the time. A real practical joker. Derek Griffiths is another one. But Stephen Bennett was like, Get off my foot! And then the next night he'd be hiding behind the scenery when I when I came off and go boo! And he was like, oh my god! <laughs> There's always lovely stuff going on in the wings. Yeah. I remember yeah. always, always stuff. People that's waving that's or doing like, something funny. This is why I'm fully in awe of you all as turns on the stage. In fact, because when when I did a cheeky cameo in in Mamma Mia, and you know, obviously you know the part inside out, and. <laughs> Uh, the actors in between their scenes are quite happy popping out for a bit of fresh air or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they know their call times like that. So they know when they need to be back. I'd, I, I'd just be on a knife edge the entire time, just <laughs> yeah. waiting, 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 building myself up into a frenzy. But of course, it's not my sort of field, not my domain, but I'm fully in awe of you. I, I mean, how you remember lines, how you can go out there and, and do it night after night, I do, honestly. Half the time people forget them and make them up, darling. You know, <laughs> yeah, yes. they do, That's honestly. True. People true. don't remember them. You go for a little wander, you look, you have a look that you sort of go to each other, which means you take over. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And, and, that, that and when, and when the you eye. see, when you see that look, and the other, the other thing is that happens, which I'm sure has happened to all of us. And that years ago when I was doing There's a Girl in My Suit with Gary Holt and God rest his soul. Uh, and it was a big scene where I'd say, my boyfriend's coming to get me now. And uh, I looked at John Stride and uh, that was it, no boyfriend. And we just thought, uh-oh. And I could hear the backstage going, where is he? Where is he? And then John Stride looked at me and he said to me, so tell me about your childhood. And I thought, you? Bastard. So I just had to start rattling on about, oh, when I was born, and I just talked a load of rubbish, and then I could hear him run, 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 run down onto the stage. And he got onto the stage, and he was completely barefoot, this, you know, Gary. Hysterical. Got his shoes on. So, because we walk on the stage, he's just come in, and we go, oh, hello. <laughs> 
that's the line you never want to hear is Miss Thorpe, you are off. You are off, <laughs> yeah. which is yeah. when you've missed your entrance. Yeah, that's it's right. the most terrifying thing. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm terrified too. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Oh, God. What happens when they say Mrs. Thorpe, you, you are, or Ms. Thorpe, I should say, Mademoiselle Thank Thorpe, you. you are off. So what, what happens, there? does that mean you've missed your queue entirely and so you're out yeah. of the queue? You're not they, on yeah. stage, yeah. you've missed your queue. Oh, and they Miss carry on without you. you. Yeah. Well, oh, until well, you can, can run down there and get As best they can. As best they can. But that's what, that's yeah. the call. You are off, you are off, yeah. you've missed the entrance. And then yeah. you get on as quickly as you bloody well can. And then everybody <clears> sort of- And then you know, know nothing. You know And then nothing. people are laughing and trying to control themselves. <laughs> and actually, it's like laughing in the classroom. It's the best feeling in the world. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so it you're is. telling me, a year ago, if my other half had just come into the den and said, Richard, you are off, I would have missed my entrance entirely for the Wonder Birds. I wouldn't have to spend the last 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I know, but you, ha you have got that knock on that door. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, Sherry. The other half, the other half is poised. And when you said my theatre career started at four and then you moved um, into your next <laughs> age of five and six, I thought, well, we're going to be here a while. So, uh, <laughs> um, I, need, I need no reward for the time that I spend with you. It is really enough just to be with you. Oh, oh my yes. God. Thank I you. am reading this. I'm going to say, who's reading you? Is that in your ear? Who wrote this script? Oh, what? Who wrote this script? <laughs> yeah, I did. It, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I'll do another one for you next week, Richard. Yeah, will you? <laughs> I'll do another one. Oh. There's that knock at the door. There's that oh. knock at the door. Come, there come it on. Is. Have a wonderful weekend, ladies. Thank you, you darling. Bye, darling. Love See you next week. Bye.